I'm Jeff, and this is Carebrock Farms. On today's video, we're going to be showing you how to unwrap after winter. So this is spring opening. So once you finally arrive at your bee yard, check out your hives. We've got a couple dead outs. These two and this one that I dealt with during the winter. Make sure that uh, the hives you're working on are good and strong. I only have eight hives to work on today. There's seven here and one way over there. The other thing you want to do is stage your equipment. So what I've got here is my smoke box. This is where I keep all the tools and all the stuff in order to make smoke for my smoker and my smoker itself. Any treatments you're going to put on. And then over here I've also stacked uh, supers, queen excluders. I'll also be changing the undercovers as well. So why are we putting on supers when the uh, only thing we got right now is pollen that's coming out. Tree pollen for the most part and dandelions are just springing out in this area right now. Because when we put on this kind of treatment, which is uh, Nod Formic Pro, one of the things that actually recommends is to put on a honey super so the bees have some place to escape to uh, that is not their brood boxes. Because we're going to be putting some Formic pads right in the middle of their brood boxes. Okay, time to get going. Once you have all of your equipment in order, the first thing we're going to do is unwrap a double. A double is a uh, beehive that has two boxes. To do that, we're going to remove our uh, quote-unquote bear protection, take the lid off, and just toss it off to the side gently so we can use it in a little bit. I put a stick in front of most of my hives in order to keep the wrapping off the front of it. We're going to take that, toss it off to the side as well, and then we're going to remove the cover. It's a little slip cover. These are Hogan's. Uh, there are other types of slip covers that are out there, or you can make your own. Uh, I like these because they are incredibly durable. Next, we're going to smoke the front and remove any other feeders. This is a jar feeder that we put on a little while ago. Now we're going to cry up the top. Now there'll be some bees on the underneath. There we are. And move those off to the side. We'll probably reposition that in a little while. Next we want to do a very quick inspection. Make sure that there are bees within this hive, and that there's a laying queen, because we're going to be putting in a um, a treatment that may actually kill off the queen that's in there. It's an acceptable possible loss if they can create a queen for themselves. Use the smoker in order to move the bees off the top of the box. We're now we're going to remove one frame off the very end and move it off to the side. Do that very slowly. It's nice and warm this day, so I'm not too worried about disturbing the bees, but I would like to make sure that they're comfortable in their home because we're about to upset them just a little bit with what we're going to do in a little while. All right, now we're going to pop this frame up. There'll be some bees on it. We should make sure that there are no brood there's lots of brood, then we're going to be a little bit concerned, but this frame is actually just honey. There we go, we're going to just move it off to the side. Bees store honey and pollen within their hive in order to have resources. That's their food. Next, we're going to slip a couple frames off to the end. As we do that, we're checking both sides of the frame just to see what is in it. This first frame is... 
Looks like it's all honey. Let's lift it up to be sure. Yep, still honey. Once inspected, it's going to slip off to the end. What we're looking for is we're looking for frame that has freshly laid eggs. That looks like is a little swirly thing or a noodly thing at the very bottom of a cell. And the cell will have some other stuff in it, usually honey, uh, in order for whatever is currently inside to eat. But we want an opened cell, um, freshly laid egg. That tells us two things. One, that there's a queen present. We don't need to go and find her. If there's evidence of her, that's useful. A little bit of smoke to keep the bees down. The other reason why is because if there is, happens to be an accident, and the queen does happen to die, they can always make another queen with what they have on hand. One last frame to pull up. As we get closer to the center of the box, we should be seeing more and more brood. Yes. You can see the cells that are colored there. Those are cells that are opened and they are, sorry, cells that are currently being used for brood. Those were the golden yellow colored cells as opposed to the darker almost orangey colored cells those were hatched brood uh, and cells that were currently vacant so the queen had been on that and had laid a number of eggs all of which would be suitable in case the queen does die they can put a new queen into production these are buckfast bees Buckfast bees are incredibly docile. You can do a lot to them, and they are pretty forgiving. We're going to put this frame back in. shake the bees off my hand. We're actually going to smoke the side of this frame. And the reason why we do that is just to make sure that any of the bees are now down. looks like all the way down, but uh, we'll find out in a little bit that that was not the case. Next, we're going to pry open this top box. We're going to move it off to the side. And the thing that we're doing next is we're going to take the top box and the bottom box off. And we're going to switch which one is the top and which one is the bottom. Actually forces the queen and its attendants all the way up to the top box, which this bottom box has lots of food and lots of brood and lots of bees. The bottom box does have bees and brood and food, but not as much. It's much, much lighter. When we swap the two of them, the main brood chamber now floats to the top, and that allows the bottom brood chambers to go and rest. And they'll slowly migrate that over the next two or three weeks. We clean off the bottom board. Take what used to be the bottom box and move it off to the side. What used to be the top box shall now become the bottom. And 
and make sure everything's nice and snugly fit. Smoke them again. Because now we come to a treatment. This treatment is called Formic Pro. It's a pre-made formic acid pad made in, I believe, Brockville, Ontario, which isn't too far away from where I live. When handling formic acid, definitely wear uh, nose, mouth protection. Underneath the gloves, I also have additional hand protection as well. Always read and follow the directions on the treatments you're using. Make sure you read them once you get out into the field, and also before you get out into the field to make sure that you have everything you need. Okay, what used to be the top box, or what used to be the bottom box, is now the top box. There we go. There are some problems. One of the frames did not go back in. So we're just going to use some uh, applied science there. There, everything fits together. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add on a honey super. So to do that, we're going to put on a queen excluder. We're going to rack that from the front to the back of the hive. That pushes some of the bees underneath it. Make sure that there is no queen there. Queen excluder is to make sure the queen doesn't get up into the honey super and start laying eggs. The only thing that will be up there is honeybees. Not even drones can now get up there. Next, we go get our inner cover. There's two types of inner covers that we have today. We have a notched one, and we have one that's unnotched. I like to use the notched ones, preferably. Always put the notch to the front. And that goes on back to front. Make sure that everything's snugly fit. Put your lid on. And you're done. Okay, now we're going to do a single hive. Again, we're going to make sure that our equipment is working. Again, we take the stick out, toss that off to the side, our bear protection, and lid come off. And again, we're going to move the lid over just to the side. It's kind of handy to have. You'll see why in a moment. Take the slip cover off. Some bees on the inside, so we're just going to toss that lightly to the end. Pry up the inner cover. This is a winter inner cover, so it's got insulation on the top of it. This was a wild swarm that we captured, I want to say, probably June, mid-July, uh, yeah, somewhere mid-June to late June of 2019. Again, any feeders you have, move them off. Pry up and make sure that you're able to separate the hive from the bottom board. Pick up the box. What we're doing here is we're just going to move it down onto the lid. And create space so there's still airflow throughout the hive. Next, we're going to scrape down this bottom board. That'll take me a few moments. Uh, 
almost done. Any of the additional bees, we're going to brush those off. Now, we've already checked this hive about a week ago to make sure that they're queen right. They should have open cells. Queen right just means that the queen is present. Saw her about a week ago. She seems nice. Lift with your knees. Now, what I did there is I walked away from the hive because they were starting to get a little angry. I've removed the sound from what's going on in the field, but you'll, you can hear from time to time when their tone changes. When their tone changes, sometimes that means just back off for a little bit. As you keep bees for longer periods of time, you start recognizing what the bees are trying to tell you as you go. But it's a distinct tonal change. Okay, treatments are out. Again, we're going to use two pads. You can go with a half pad as in only one pad, a Formic Pro for singles, but I still like to use doubles. And this time we're going to put down the Queen Excluder and set the Super directly on top. Not too, too worried about the Queen getting in. We just want to make sure that everything's nice. Inner cover goes back on. You can shake off any bees that are currently trying to curl up your arm. Little lid goes on. And that's that. We'll come back later and put on the rock couple things to note. Every so often when you do treatments like formic acid, the bees won't necessarily like it, but they need it. So they will beard. This is what's called bearding. They're going up onto the front face of the hive and they're going to hang out there until they feel that they can go back inside. This is normal behavior. This is not abnormal. This is the reason why we put additional boxes on at this time so that when they do go back in when it's cold, i.e. at night, they have some place to go that's not directly in with the, uh, uh, with the treatment, with the formic acid. So this, this is all entirely normal.